This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence for your business. Hello and welcome to my art channel. I'm slowly settling into my new studio and by slowly I mean for the past four months. I can't believe it's already been past four months since I moved. But yeah, I actually haven't done any sort of big traditional pieces um, in the studio yet, I don't think. Uh, although, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call this piece particularly big. Um, it was definitely a lot of work, a lot of footage. So get ready and settle in for a cozy, work with me type of video where I will show you the entire process of this new sheet full of illustrations that I did recently specifically for the purpose of making some stickers, a sticker sheet to be precise and also some individual vinyl stickers as well. I know that some of you guys who are regular watchers of my channel have been waiting for me to make a video like this for a while. Uh, it has been a long time since I have touched my inks and I have missed them very dearly. So I was very glad to be able to use them again after all this time. Um, I think I'm currently going through like a pretty big digital streak as far as my art goes, especially since I have started working on my online comic. Finally, I shouldn't say online. I don't know if, th if I could definitively categorize it as that but anywho i finally started working on it you guys and i will talk more about it soon but in this video i'm obviously showing you this illustration and the reason why i decided to do it is because convention season is upon us or upon me anyways um lots of big conventions are happening in the fall and i am going to attend two of them which is super exciting um, they're very soon, both in October. Uh, I'm going to New York Comic Con and Lightbox Expo this year. I really hope to see some of you guys there. Uh, I'll be posting more info about that uh, later on my other so me social media channels and probably here like in the community section as far as like the table info and whatnot goes. But anyways, I wanted to have some new merchandise for these conventions. Uh, I, I really love making merch. I know right now I have more important projects, but I just wanted to make at least one new thing, which is honestly a pretty significant uh, reduction of my initial plans, you guys, because I, I always want to do way more than I physically can and physically have the time to. Believe it or not, my first idea was to do a whole sticker sheet, uh, like one of those sticker packs that I did previously, uh, as some of you guys may be familiar with if you followed me for any amount of time, that consists of six sticker sheets filled with designs like this. Obviously, I had to give myself a pretty harsh reality check because I only started working on this like a few weeks ago and the conventions are almost here. There's no way I would have been able to do an entire sticker pack with six sheets. So thankfully, um, you know, practicality prevailed and I decided to just stick with one. And you know what? That was the perfect amount. I was able to finish it just in time to order some things for the conventions, which by the way, if you stick around till the end of this video, I will show you um, the vinyl stickers that I just got in the mail today, which is excellent timing because I have to post this video very soon. But yeah, so what you've been looking at thus far in the video is just my very simple process of doing the sketch and transferring it onto the traditional watercolor paper. and. I'll just quickly go over the steps of that in case you haven't heard me talk about it before. It's straightforward. I prefer to do the initial sketch digitally because it is much easier to edit shapes um, or like redraw shapes, I suppose, without having to erase too many times, as well as resize all the elements as much as necessary in order to fit the composition of the sheet. Because when I design these types of sticker sheets, I have found that I really like deciding on the composition and like all the placement of the different sticker designs uh, 
ahead of time in advance so I don't have to do a whole lot of resizing and moving around later on. So I can just scan the entire sheet, clean it up, and it's almost good to go at that point. And for that reason, it's much easier to just do the sketch digitally. And the secondary reason that's just as important to do the sketch digitally is that it allows me to preserve the integrity of the paper as much as possible because I, I can go on very lightly when I do trace the digital printout of the sketch onto the final watercolor paper, which makes the final uh, result of the illustration super, super clean. It's definitely much cleaner than anything I could ever get if I were to just sketch and experiment on this poor piece of paper from the start because sometimes I go through a lot of different lines and have to do a lot of erasing and that really does tend to destroy the paper. So uh, once I do the quick transfer over with not a whole lot of detail to the final watercolor page, I just do another cleaner sketch pass just right over it. And it's typically super similar to the initial transfer, just a little more resolved, typically specifically in the face, so that when I go in an ink, it's very precise. And at that point, I don't really have to do any guesswork. It's just very simple. So those were the beginning stages that I <laughs> spent talking about other things. And at this point, I am obviously in the inking stage and as you can see i kind of switch back and forth a little bit because there are some elements in this illustration that i decided to just paint in with the ink directly without doing line art for them and those elements are like the candle lights uh some of the moths or butterfly designs and some of the flower petals uh, and i decided to keep it kind of sparse and so the rest of it i decided to just ink and for the ink as usual as some of you may know i really really love mixing an interesting tone for the line art so it might look black in this video because the camera can't really pick up the subtleties of the color but this ink is actually composed of black uh indigo and blue, sorry, did I say indigo? I meant uh, violet. So I used black ink, violet ink, and blue ink. And all of those are India inks, so they are permanent. And that's one of the reasons why I love working in ink so much because it, due to its permanent nature, you can do some really interesting things with the layering as you will see me do later on in the video. Let me just take a quick minute to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. With social media getting increasingly oversaturated and tough to keep up with, I think it's important to have a portfolio website to showcase my work in an organized and professional way to potential clients. I've always found the idea of building and upkeeping a website to be super daunting. I have even tried and given up in the past, but using Squarespace has totally changed the game for me. It was super easy and fast to build a portfolio website using Squarespace's engine, which is both simple and intuitive. I really, really appreciate how quick it is to make big overall changes to the color scheme and other design elements. Squarespace has everything you might need for your online business. There's a built-in e-commerce platform where you can build your shop, whether it be digital or physical goods, and you can even set up scheduling and appointments. And if you want to share secret content for a monthly subscription, there's a members area feature in Squarespace as well, so you can have everything in one place. To start building your own website, you can head over to squarespace.com and get right to it for free. Once you put the website together and are ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now back to the video. As you can see, the look of the blue ink right here is very, very similar to watercolor. So I've always been a big fan of how watercolor looks. It's so airy, beautiful, and light. And colored ink definitely has a very similar quality to it, which is why I love it so much as well. But like I've mentioned, it is permanent, so you can do a lot more interesting things with it. And you might wonder why not just use watercolor for the blue parts. Well, that's because I avoid um, a mess. And even though the permanence of the ink makes it a little bit more difficult because you can't go back, uh, it does make for a much cleaner result because none of what you already put down will get picked up by any subsequent layers. And so that is the reason why 
ink and colored ink is probably my favorite traditional medium and so yeah i mixed up this ink that i at first thought was a little bit too dark for the line work um because as you can see in this video especially it looks almost black but later on when i started doing my ink washes and adding more colors or like adding layers of um, tone to the elements i realized that it was actually the perfect shade because it's not too it wasn't too dark as i was afraid it would be um it ended up being perfect because it kind of blended into certain elements and also created nice borders for others as you will see later on in the process and i just wanted to mention that there are different types of permanent ink obviously <laughs> there are many different brands and i just wanted to mention specifically that i do prefer the matte finish uh, I, I have several black inks and they have different finishes and there is a glossy finish that I used to use sometimes, which is kind of a cool effect too, actually. But lately, I've mostly just been sticking to the matte finish. And so I just figured maybe that's in an important detail, but I mentioned it anyways. So yeah, I um, don't think I will just narrate through the entirety of the process because you guys have probably seen me use seen me use this process so many times before um there are honestly not too many new things i can say about it and so i will most likely leave a couple of gaps here and there in this video um and just throw some music in there and because i made this video a little bit longer than usual because i wanted to show you most of the parts of the process and i had a lot of footage so I quickly wanted to mention here also that most of the elements up until what you're looking at now, I just did using uh, ink first, as in like inking the outlines first. But for the main design that was the biggest one on the page, I decided that it was probably a good idea for me to throw down some tones on the character's face and skin first. And I thought that was a really nice idea because it just gave me um, a better idea of how I wanted to approach the hair. Since it's been such a long time since I've done this type of process, drawing traditionally using ink only, I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to approach the hair since I do have many different ways in which I sometimes tackle it depending on the illustration. So for this one, after I looked at how the skin was turning out with just the tones, I decided to go with a very, very layered process for the hair that is not super shiny, but more uh, concentrated on blending the different tones of dark into the hair, uh, creating sort of like a like the watery type of ebbs and flows of the color of the ink. It's not really um, using any sort of light source or anything like that. I'm treating it as purely a design element. So I'm taking very little like realism into consideration here. And it's mostly just about creating pleasing looking shapes with the washes and just creating like a, a lovely looking object, I guess, uh, design wise. And I know I'm talking about this kind of preemptively because I, at this stage I'm still doing the line work. <clears throat> and I will mention that I did include more, or, or not more, but longer real time uh, footage chunks in this video because I was editing it and I thought that it was actually more relaxing to watch a little bit of a longer cut when it comes to um, line work, I guess. I don't know. You let me know what you think about that because a lot of the times beforehand, I used to uh, edit in much shorter chunks, like a few seconds each, but now I decided to keep them longer. I think it's actually more relaxing to watch, but any sort of feedback on that would be um, welcome. But anyways, I'm just gonna take a little break on the voiceover and I'll be back when the ink washing is on.
right, so here we are at the ink wash stage of the hair. As you can see, I'm using a wet on wet technique here. I do really like how the effect turns out and it can be a little bit daunting to do that at first because it might look messy and it dries quite different from what it looks like when it is wet. But I wanted to mention one of the reasons why I like this particular paper so much, uh, the paper being Saunders Waterford um, cold press watercolor paper. So it's got a nice texture and the reason why i like this paper like i said is because i find that it keeps the ink wet for a little bit longer than most of the other watercolor paper i've used before and that actually makes it a lot easier to make ink washes like this because it just gives me more time to be precise and to blend out the edges uh, to make smooth gradients. It doesn't always turn out perfect, but I feel like even working at this rate where this kind of precision does um, really force me to slow down quite a bit, and I still manage to get relatively clean washes even though the speed is quite slow here. Um, but yeah, so I just like to tackle one element at a time, definitely not trying to do the whole entirety of the sh shape of the hair all in one go i just strategically pick um one shape at a time to fill out and in the end it does like the first wash does turn out to be relatively uniform i will say but there are some subtle uh differences between um between the tones here and there and i do also place those strategically as well i did mention earlier in the video that i don't really take lighting into account which it's true i don't but um, even without knowing what potentially the lighting scenario is like in just a simple design like this, I will still try to put a little bit of a lighter um, shade of the ink where presumably a highlight would be on the hair um, because of where it bends. So there's stuff like that that I still take into consideration, even though, you know, realism is definitely not where it's at over here. So yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. So yeah, um, a lot of these decisions that I'm making are kind of decided on the spot as well. As you can see, I decided to put a da dark background um, between the wing, like in the space between the wings and the hair because I was thinking about it in terms of the sticker design and I thought that it would be weird if it was just white space there. And in order to create a more cohesive shape for the sticker, I decided to use black in those uh, spots instead. And I did not mention this earlier, but it was also a spontaneous decision to use blue ink for the roses, which I thought was a great decision because I really, really like how it ended up looking. I knew right off the bat, even when I was sketching these out, that the color scheme was going to be very simple for this one. And I also specifically wanted to do a cool uh, color scheme with blue as the most vibrant color. Um, because I actually don't really use blue all that much in my artwork. As you may have noticed, I really tend to gravitate towards warmer colors like reds and oranges and browns. That is the majority of my body of work, especially traditional work. I think digitally I do tend to experiment more with different color schemes. But even so, uh, I do still tend to lean red even in my digital work, but I wanted to do something different for this one. And I do really like how different the vibe ended up being. I think it's so somber and obviously I still wanted it to be Halloween themed, uh, as you probably noticed with all the pumpkins and whatnot and the candles. And I think it's actually kind of cool to have blue pumpkins instead of the typical red, orange, or the um, more festive, I guess, fall colors that you see. So here I am finally moving on to the most fun part for me as far as the inking process goes, which is adding depth and layers to the ink wash. And I obviously love drawing hair, just in case you guys haven't noticed already in this video. And of course, that is the element that I'm going to give the most love as far as rendering and detailing goes. So I basically just take a look at what I have and slowly 
work in a bunch of micro gradients for separate strands and I take my time to just add dark further and further until I find myself happy with the result. So it's much easier to darken an area rather than to lighten it, especially since I'm working with permanent ink here. So of course, the first wash that I put down on the hair was kind of like a medium tone. It wasn't super dark at all. And this character does have dark hair. So I knew that I was gonna put many layers um, on it afterwards. And also, I will mention that since I decided to make the background dark between the hair and like the body and um, the wings on that design, I had to be kind of careful as to not make the hair too dark so that it would blend into those spots. So that's something I had to take into consideration. But moving on to the next design, I um, dis I decided to kind of jump between um, the different footage going forward because I use a pretty similar approach to everything, but sometimes when I work on a sheet with many illustrations on it like this, I will often just tackle things um, like one color at a time rather than one design at a time. So at some point when I felt super satisfied with the main design of the angel with the blue roses, I just picked the dark blue color and found all the places, all the little spots um, peppered throughout the whole page and decided to just go through it and add that color everywhere else as a whole. And I'm sure you've seen me do this on other sheets before that I do have on my channel. But I like to work that way because it's actually a lot faster and um, it ends up kind of being more cohesive in the end, I guess, because I, I decide how to evenly spread all the different colors that I'm using, or actually the opposite of that, the few colors that I'm using um, in an interesting way that's not too much. And this kind of uh, gives me a chance to constantly glance at the sheet as a whole because the sheet will be um, presented as a whole. So yeah, that's another reason why I really, really prefer doing all the different designs on a single sheet of paper, just to see how they all work together and in relation to each other. By the way, I want to apologize for my voice. I am feeling a little bit under the weather this week, which is super unfortunate because my really, really close friend from so far away is visiting me this week and unfortunately I got sick a couple of days ago and we haven't been able to do a whole lot for the past two days, which makes me super sad. I'm sorry, Nina, <laughs> if you're going to be listening to this. But anyways, um, and I wanted to apologize for the random jumping around of my camera footage. I noticed this while I was editing and I have no idea why it does that because um, it is on a stationary, like it's kind of clipped to my desk, so I don't understand why the footage jumps sometimes without any explanation, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. So yeah, um, at this point I'm adding some depth to the mirror design, and when I was doing this, I was already contemplating what I'm going to do with these designs when it comes to the bigger vinyl sticker sheets that I was also planning to make kind of from the get-go from the bigger illustrations on this page. And I did decide that I like that making the background black or dark for this particular sticker would be kind of cool because usually most of the vinyl stickers that I make either have a transparent outline or a black outline. And the problem with the transparent outline is that I can't get any special effects on the stickers that I order if I wanted to have transparent um, outline. Because how I don't know if you guys know how making vinyl stickers works, or at least in this particular company, but I'm pretty sure it works the same for everybody. Um, they print, like if you want special effects, the whole role of vinyl is the special effect and then the ink goes on top of that. So obviously if the whole sheet is the special effect, which could be like glitter or holographic or something like that, um, there can be no transparency. 
and versus transparent stickers uh the whole sheet of vinyl is transparent and the ink is printed on top of that so hopefully that makes sense obviously it's pretty straightforward i actually didn't know that that's how it works before i started ordering stickers um and it was a surprise to me so anyways because i'm so obsessed with special effects i definitely wanted to do some sort of mirror effect on the mirror design uh, which is kind of one that knows i know but uh, i actually will talk about that a little bit later at the end of the video where i actually show you the final vinyl stickers um but anyways so while i work on stuff like this i typically tend to contemplate what i'm going to do with the illustration afterwards and so i came up with a bunch of ideas on how i'm going to handle the production of the actual um like stuff that i'm going to make with these designs while i was still drawing them which sometimes helps me come up with pretty cool ideas on the spot by the way So I wanted to mention here that uh, I actually ended up using way less colored pencils than I thought I was going to. I really, really love the process of using colored inks and then finishing it, finishing it off and adding a lot of details with um, my color pencil set. Oh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm totally blanking. Polychromos, yes, polychromos pencils. That's usually what I use, and, and maybe you noticed I actually took out the set in the beginning of the video because I thought I was going to use it, but I didn't end up using it at all. I only used this one color race Prismacolor pencil to add a little bit of blue into her dress and just a little bit in the wings as well. And that is all the color pencil I ended up using, which was pretty surprising to me, but I really just didn't feel like it needed it. So I rolled with it as it was happening and changed my plans a little bit. And speaking of changing plans, I while I was doing the mirror design, it just hit me that it would look really, really nice if the background had like a bunch of galaxy stars. And I don't know, there's just something about it that fit with the theme as well in a weird way. Even though it's not strictly Halloween, but still, I don't know, graveyard angel angel something about celestial whatever it just sort of tracked in my mind so i decided to put in a bunch of stars in that one design and then i also put a little bit of them in the other one in the hair as well and there was no place where i could do that on the main design so i decided to pivot and put in a little bit of white details as raindrops on the roses and i thought that was honestly such a nice touch afterwards it just gave it this really really delicate vibe which i'm a big fan of and yeah i think that's about it those were the last finishing touches and it came together thankfully faster than i thought because probably because i skipped the pencil step and this is the finished product here is a little bit a little bit of a close-up for you guys I am super meticulous about details, so I always really enjoy the close-ups. I think you can really see how much I care about perfecting the lines and making sure that everything is as neat as I possibly can make it. And it also helps that I decided to draw designs that are a little bit bigger for this page. So yeah, I especially really like how this one turned out the one where she's sitting on the grave with the two pumpkins on the bottom and yes all the little elements oh, i can't wait for this to be an actual sticker sheet um that i can use in my journal so if you have 
stuck around all the way till the end of this video thank you first of all for watching my videos and here are the final vinyl sticker designs printed and ready to go which I will bring with me to New York Comic Con and Lightbox Expo and I will also do a shop update very soon. My shop has been closed for a long time now and I'm finally going to reopen it shortly. Um, sometime in the beginning of October, I'll definitely announce it beforehand because I do have a lot of new stuff. But yeah, I'm so, so excited about how these stickers came out. I got the opportunity to actually select um, the parts that I wanted to be special effects myself, which I was so excited about because usually the company I order from sticker app they do it themselves like if you tell them which element to select but having done it myself I was able to be super precise and just kind of come up with it on the spot which was a lot of fun and I think it turned out great and with the mirror design I think it was so it was such a good idea to put the dark background in because now I can put it like on my laptop, like my darker laptop and probably my Cintiq screen, like any number of objects where I didn't want a harsh white line around the design. Uh, this is perfect for. The only thing I will say that I could have done differently is I should have gotten a holographic for this one as well. Um, it's very similar, but I got the mirror effect for the mirror sticker because I thought it was neat. But in the end, I think the mirror effect is just slightly less um, bright than the holograph. So I kind of regret that decision, but I think it still turned out amazing. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. And I will see you in my next one. Bye bye.